This is the Build Zone Podcast. One, two, three, four. Welcome to episode 136 of the Build Zone Podcast. This opening has taken us six tries, and by us, I mean me. My name is <laughs> Allison Jackson, joined by my co-host, Mike Maloney. This month, we have a brand new presenting partner. We're so excited. We have Energy Electrical Contractors, and then our lightning round sponsor is still Bald Hill Builders, tried and true. Mike, tell us about our, our um, sponsors this month. I'm excited to uh, welcome Energy Electrical Contractors to the podcast. They are uh, sponsoring the podcast for August and September, so we'll be talking about them quite a bit next couple of weeks, but we always like to go right to the website energyelectricne.com and it says here they've been trusted for generations for bringing electrical and energy projects to life and they put nothing above providing their customers with the highest quality service and backing with the longest most comprehensive warranties and they prioritize the uh, the customer's comfort and safety and take pride in providing a worry-free reliable experience they've been around for over 35 years serving clients they've got 150 or more people directly employed and have completed 1,500 projects since 1987. We are excited to welcome them to the podcast next few weeks. Uh, and every week, we'll either read from the website or read their social media. And we are excited to have them on. And we've got Bald Hill Builders, uh, which not only is the lightning round sponsor, but the guest this week is Rachel Apple. She's the assistant site superintendent for Bald Hill Builders. And uh, what we like to do usually for our sponsors is go right to the social media and we want to congratulate the Vice President Mass Gross Handler and Team Perry for completing the Pan Mass Challenge this past weekend. Team Ooh. Perry PMC has raised an impressive $9 million and counting over the last 22 years. 100% of the proceeds go directly to cancer research. Uh, if you don't live in the Northeast and are not familiar with the Pan Mass Challenge, it's a bike ride. You ride your bicycle from Sturbridge to the Cape. It's about 160 miles. They do it in two days. Um, it's a very impressive. I've never done the Pan Mass Challenge. I've done the Cape Cod Getaway, which is Boston to Provincetown on a bicycle. That's 170 miles, 160 something miles. Uh, if you've never ridden a bicycle for 75 miles or more, it is unbelievable. Uh, they there's a hundreds, maybe thousands of people riding their bikes to raise money for cancer research. So congratulations to everyone at Bald Hill Builders, especially the Vice President Mass Matt Grosshandler. Uh, and I know this week on the podcast we've got something that uh, we read in the news that. Made Allison very upset this morning. What's the no, news at? I am livid, everybody. So I saw this headline and I couldn't be more disturbed. <clears throat> Chicken wings advertised as boneless can have bones, Ohio Supreme Court decides. And my question is, when will it stop? Why you're going to what false advertise boneless chicken tenders to me now? I, if I am in somewhere and I order honey barbecue chicken tenders and there's a bone in my boneless honey barbecue chicken tenders, I will wreak havoc silently because I'm not rude to wait staff and neither should you. Be. Oh, hold on a second. Wait. Is a boneless wing a tender? That's the question. So if you order bone, a tender is different. So, but. There. I okay, wrong. I apologize. All right, we're going to get into semantics about okay, fine. boneless wings. If you go to the fine. go to the local restaurant, they you have get boneless, boneless wings. wings. They have right. boneless wings. 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 What is a boneless wing though? Is somebody really pulling the meat off the bone and then deep? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think a boneless wing. Here's the thing. Let's get real honest right now. Yeah. Do we really want to know what's in there? No. 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 So as I bet you there isn't a bone in there. I don't think they call it. They're gonna change. They're gonna change how they they call it. And they won't call them boneless wings. They call them something else. A boneless uh, bite. I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. But don't if you can't call it a wing anymore, fine. Don't. Yeah. That's on you for calling it that in the first place. Not you. Them. So someone but, took a big bite of a boneless wing. Air quotes here. Boneless wing and got a bone in, but broke their tooth or choked on it. Got sick. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think people are gonna start signing a waiver when they eat their dinner or. Then I change what they call it. But you, if you both bit down that boneless tender at your local restaurant, you'd be pretty upset. I would be livid. I'm livid thinking about it. Because I, if I get one bite of like a weird piece of a, the chicken, I'm done eating. Really? I, I Oh, my God. I can't do it. No, I can't. I'm done. I'm done. And I need like gummy worms to like heal me. Like, 
I can't. I'm done with the savory. At that point, I'm done with dinner. I moved to dessert. <laughs> can't do it. It kind of goes along the lines with like the 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 lawsuit years ago, like a coffee place. They handed out coffee and someone spilt it on themselves and they didn't realize it was hot coffee. And like, well, you ordered a hot coffee. I gave you a coffee. The lid popped off and you spilt it on yourself and you burned yourself. And then they want to start suing, right? So they gotta, they can't, they gotta. Well, know. that's why on like all the cups it says caution, content yep. may be hot. Correct. Well, if I, I'm sorry, if I'm ordering a hot coffee and it comes to me lukewarm, another reason I'm gonna be mad. If I spill it on myself, I'm having bad luck that day. Yep. That's not Dunkin' Donuts' fault. Right. For giving me a hot cup of coffee. First of they all, thank built. you for giving me a hot cup of coffee. I yep. don't want a lukewarm one. Yep. But actually, if you really know me, I only want iced. So Only want iced. All right. So uh, to listeners out there, what would you do if you ordered boneless wings and, were, and bit down on a wing by accident? Would you bring it to the Ohio State Supreme Court? Or go even higher. So uh, that's uh, this week's Wacky and Wild News. And one last thing. Don't come for me because I like boneless wings. I am just as much of a person I, as you are for eating. Not you. Not you. I, our listener. I, our I, listeners. I'm with you. Me. I know I like, you are. I like the boneless wings. Don't come for me because I yeah. like boneless wings. I, I do like a good bone on wing. However, I like to eat fast sometimes. And if I want to eat seven boneless wings in one minute, I can't do that on the bone. I just don't have the talent. Too much work. It's the bone on the bone is too much work. It's too much fingers, work. I just want to eat. Yeah, I, the fingers are messy, and then you can't, and then it's too much. You get too much work for very little meat, and your fingers get messy. Same with ribs. I'm, I, I like a good rib, right? But it's mm. picking up ribs and eating off the bone, fingers, and it's not my jam. I'd rather just eat a. I just I don't I don't need the the bone in. I don't. I'm good. Too messy. Keep it simple. Like I want to eat fast. I don't want to have to fight with my food to get it off the bone. I'm not a Neanderthal caveman eating meat off the bone. So, exactly. uh, yeah, we, we agree on that. So this week's guest is Rich Lappel. She is the assistant site superintendent from Bald Hill Builders. Uh, her story is amazing. And we talked a little bit about her experience as a site superintendent and what it takes to be a good superintendent on the site. Okay, Moving here. into trainings coming up this fall. Um, I'm going to skip ahead um, into September. So we have a construction supervisor license prep for exam class starting September 5th. It's going to be four sessions, um, the 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. You do have to attend all four sessions to get all the info that you need. It's a really, really great class um, if you are getting ready to take your construction supervisor license test. September 14th, we have a sheet metal prep for exam class. So if you're getting ready to take your sheet metal exam, or if you're a student and you want to get ahead of the game and get some prep, um, some prep questions that you can bring back to your teacher, asks, asks, ask some questions, um, feel free to do that. That's going to be again on September 14th, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., real quick session, you're in and out. And then September 21st and 28th, there is a pipe fitter prep for exam class. Both sessions are part of the one, so you do have to attend both. It's going to be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. both days. And again, it's a really great opportunity to get in, get prepared for your pipe fitter, journeyman test, but also get some prep work, get ready for your test if you're not taking it for another year. You can check out all of those classes and the rest of what we have through December 2024 at gwgci.org forward slash events. Awesome. Lots of great things come up in the training world. Um, like what we said a bunch of times, you know, school may be out of, uh, out of session right now, but we're gearing up for the fall. So if you have not registered for class, uh, register soon. Classes are filling up very quick. A lot of classes are already filled. Uh, and if you're waiting to, to sign up for some reason, don't. Now, is, now is the time. Don't wait because you'll be left out. A lot of classes are already filled. And we're very mm -hmm. excited. Moving classes from Lawrence up to Barricas. So we've got a new uh, schoolhouse up in Barricas almost done. Uh, I'm hoping to have some pictures and video next week when we have the podcast. I'll go on a Mark Schultz video. It's really pretty cool. Uh, this week's news and weekly update is brought to you by Energy Electric Contractors, Patriot Benefit Services, Metro Walls, and Veterans Development Corporation. And the top billing in the news is state legislature ends formal session without passing PLA bill. Mass legislature ended its formal sessions on August 1st with House and Senate negotiators unable to reach a consensus on several major bills including an economic development bill that contained authorization language for union-only project labor agreements in both the House and Senate versions. So stay tuned for more, uh, more information about the PLA stuff going on at the government level. 
Uh, and if you uh, if you get the newsletter in the newsletter, there's a, a, a survey link uh, that is going to help out the job placement for immigrants with work authorization has contacted ABC Director of Workforce Development, Steve Sullivan, about potential workforce opportunities for ABC members. If you would like to learn more about it, you can reach out to Steve at Steve at ABCMA.org. Take the survey in the newsletter. Uh, and we're also looking for uh, ABC Massachusetts members with veterans that work for them. There's a survey in the newsletter. Please complete the survey. We're trying to get this uh, veterans group off the ground to do some volunteer work, work with local veterans. It's going to be a great thing. Uh, we've got the last blast of summer coming up at the end of August down at the Coven Fall River on August 29th from 4 to 7. It is a uh, supplier members marketplace networking event. Reach out to carol at abcma.org. We've got a legal roundtable coming up Thursday, September 10th. Employment risk for contractors, uh, marijuana in the workforce. It's, uh, that's another great one. Excellence in Construction Awards. The entry is open to um, submit your nominees for the awards. And we've got upcoming trade shows coming up. Stand by for more information about that. And we do want to let everybody know that if you're listening, and uh, we do have plumbing classes now available and in in-person plumbing classes in uh, Taunton and Borica. So if you're looking to take a plumbing class, if you're an ABC Mass member and have students or apprentices going to schools outside of the Gould, we do now offer in-person plumbing classes in Taunton and Barica. Pretty exciting. Real quick, we want to congratulate Ducks Inc.'s uh, list of August anniversaries. They have been ABC Mass members for 30 years, as well as Colonial Contract and Excavating of Ashburnham, 10 years. Lawrence Electric and Kadon Integrated Technologies among Better Business Journal Corporate Citizen Award winners. Congratulations to them. Congratulate Steve Nardone and the folks over at Nardone Electric for being uh, 40th anniversary. This is fantastic news. Steve Nardone's a great guy. Does some great things for the trades. MAS Building a Bridge is building an MBTA bridge replacement project. Congratulations to them. And Kaplan Construction welcomes Ann Sakira as a scheduling manager. Welcome uh anna and to the team as always if you want to be on the podcast reach out to me mike at gwgci.org all right this week's guest is rachel apple assistant site superintendent for bald hill builders we are excited to have bald hill on as a uh, lightning round sponsor and uh it's a great conversation we learned a lot i learned a lot about being a site superintendent from rachel let's hear from her remember like tag share and follow tell your friends Welcome, listeners, to the podcast. We are excited to have with us today Rachel Apple. She is the Assistant Site Superintendent for Bald Hill Builders, and we're excited because not only is Rachel on the podcast with us this week, but Bald Hill Builders is our uh, presenting our lightning round sponsor for the next couple of weeks, so we're very excited to have them on, and it took us a while, but we did figure it out. Welcome to the podcast, Rachel. Hi, thank you for having me. And uh, So for those that don't know who you are and what you do for Bald Hill, why don't you give us a quick introduction to yourself, what you do, and, and how you got to be where you are today? Sure. So I am an assistant superintendent um, for a site for general contractor, Bald Hill Builders. Uh, we manage a bunch of subcontractors um, to build um, whatever we're building for the developers. <clears throat> we work in conjunction with the architects. Uh, I grew up in Denver, Colorado. I started, I came, I went to college for engineering and did a bunch of other stuff until I found my way into construction in 2012. I started as a local seven union iron worker in steel erection and bridge work and um, welding and mist metals, which I absolutely loved. Um, and after about 10 years of that, I wanted to learn other things. So I kind of took a step back and went to the management side of things because I thought it would be fun to then learn all the other trades. Um, and I have a, a strong management background, so I wanted to, um, I thought I'd be, I thought I could bring some good skills to the table. That's great. So, uh, so that was in 2012. So you've been doing the management side for about 10 years, you think? No, nope, So I was an iron oh. worker for oh. 10 years. I've been doing the management side for about a year and a half now. And then, you know, for I'm those sorry. Don't, yes, you do. So for those that don't know right now, it's funny, we question popped up earlier today was what actually a superintendent does on the job site because i know there's estimators and project managers and superintendents mm -hmm. and all that stuff so what exactly does a superintendent do on the job site every day for those that might not know 
So we manage pretty much everything on a day-to-day -day basis. We um, coordinate with all the subcontractors so that all of the work can be done. Uh, we coordinate scheduling between trades. Um, we try to foresee obstacles. We foresee um, design obstacles or questions that might arise and conflicts that might arise, which happens all the time. Um, growing up, I thought a building was like a block of Legos and everything just went together really smoothly like right. Legos. Not the case whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our um, standard operating procedures to correct or at least rectify whatever conflict and questions and issues arise. So it's important for us to have field experience to understand a little bit of what each trade is doing as well as what their scope of work is. Um, it's important to be able to understand the the drawings, the blueprints for all of their, their work so that you can kind of oversee that and help with any kind of difficulties as well as quality control. Um, we do a lot of quality control um, and quality assurance for their work to see that it's to specification. Um, in addition, we do a lot of passive house stuff. So a lot of it is, um, it's, it, it, uh, it's kind of surrounding the envelope of the building. So we use a lot of membrane, a lot of uh, vapor barrier. Um, it's called FIA, so we're FIA certified. A lot of our projects are FIA certified um, so that they use a lot less energy. So in doing that, we work closely with our architects to make sure that the building has a really good, solid, continuous envelope. We also do deliveries. We schedule um, three-week plans, stuff like that. Now, for someone out there that might be interested in getting into the superintendent field, what is one place you think someone should start? Um, <clears throat> to get into the superintendent field, I would yeah. say a great place to start if you have no no construction experience would be just to uh, jump in and get your uh, your feet wet in one of the trades, um, maybe a laborer's union or as a laborer or any kind of trade. Um, and then kind of see if you enjoy it and then work your way up from there. Um, also, you can apply probably directly to many companies to uh, whether it be on LinkedIn or Indeed who are looking for assistance, because a lot of times an assistant superintendent position does not assume any experience or very little experience. So if you're okay with starting out with like an entry level salary, they have you there so that you can learn on the job and they'll put you through several projects until you get the experience that they think is, is you need and that you feel comfortable with to run your own site. Now you talked a lot bit about some of the things you do on the jobs every day. What is your favorite part of your job? My absolute favorite part is we, as Bald Hill, our mission statement or one of our, our strongest mission objectives is called building a better experience. We work with a lot of minority subcontractors um, in trying to build a better workplace, both for us on site, for our developers and our owners of the, of the um, buildings that we do, as well as for the subcontractors that may just be starting out or... Um, may have a little bit of cultural um, difficulties, whether it be language, whether it be um, monetary, something like that. So we're here to try to not help, but to kind of, I guess, maybe um, participate with them and, and communicate so that we can kind of all grow together and they make our um, environment more enriched and we are able to help them kind of with the experience, whether it be learning the drawings. My absolute favorite part is working with them, showing them drawings, teaching them what they need to do to do their own quality control, showing them every specific thing that's important, teaching them the OSHA stuff that's really important. Why? I love showing them. I love seeing them thrive and want to learn more and want to have um, a standard of excellence that may be on what they currently have. And I think that's amazing because one of the things we do on the podcast is we talk, we'll go to the website, we talk a little bit about some of the mission and values and things that Bald Hill does. I know I've seen that on there, you know, trying to work with companies that maybe they never worked before with them and they're trying to, you know, teach people, show people the construction world. Do you remember a particular story where maybe you had someone brand new to the Bald Hill experience and now that you're kind of work with them a lot, do you have any of this, like those types of stories? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> 
we have a, a we had a group here. The company was called True Brother, and we had a bunch of windows that we installed. <clears throat> we had to go through and do a lot of membrane work um, on the rough openings of the windows. And True Brothers is a framing company and they did not have a lot of experience with um, European window install and much less passive house experience or envelope continuity experience. So I was able to go through this with them and train them on a on a step-by-step -step basis and do quality control with them over the period of about a month, step-by-step, day-by-day, meeting-by-meeting um, in Spain. Spanish and Portuguese because they didn't really speak English to the point where they were so good at it and so professional at it and they loved doing it and they took pride in it and they knew they did it really well. So that, that to me is what it's all about. When you have someone that wants to do well, that wants to elevate their experience and their professionalism. And that is great because then, you know, you kind of build that rapport with them, right? So maybe the next yeah. job, right. The next job, whether they be with, Bald Hill, or if you were somebody else, they could take kind of what you've already taught them and bring them to the next company or the next GC, right? They're, they're I'm sure they appreciate that because what you gave them, that education, that, that small few months was probably more than they could ever learn in a classroom or a couple of, you know, six, eight months. And I would project. love to have them back on any job that I do because they, by the end, they did a great job. We had a great rapport, um, great respect for one another. And I, I would like that too, right? And I think that would be great to deliver on something like that and be able to touch that company where they probably went and told everybody that they ever worked with man those guys were ball hill taught us a ton you know we, we you know she took the time she took the time to show us these things and made our company better and then now they can bid on other jobs and say that this is what they're doing um what is something that you don't like about the job right what is one of those things that you don't look forward to every day, <laughs> right <laughs> oh man um That's a tough one. That, that, that's, a, that's a tough one. Because you probably, you know, you don't want to name names. You don't want to name things. But I'm sure this, you know, this. Um. So I'll, I don't know if I say don't like it. It's difficult. Mm. There is a language barrier sometimes um, that is difficult and it's challenging. Um, I'm able to speak a little bit of Spanish. I've My Spanish has increased greatly since I've been here, but I don't understand Portuguese. So um, that has become a challenge at times. We do a lot of charades, a lot of... Um, translator apps a lot of times things get lost in communication so it's difficult to impart exactly what you're if you're trying to specifically detail something or show something that's kind of difficult and that takes time it takes a lot of time three four times what you would normally do so that's that's a little difficult to achieve but that's part of the reason why we're here right, right. um the other things that i think is just just the the daily um kind of grind between the whole bureaucracy or between the owners, the money right. here, us being the middlemen, trying to give the quality control of the um, from the subcontractors and get the work done when there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen that are pulling different strings or that mm. um, have different money, um, money values tied to certain things where you can't necessarily get done what you want to get done. That's a, that's a great point. Uh, what about projects? Is there a particular project that you're most proud of that, you know, I know you said your uh, fees – uh, certify the company, but what is one particular project that jumps out at you is something that you really loved? I would say, so I did a, a closeout in Somerville and I really enjoyed that project. My first project was FIDA certified with another company that was in Chelsea and I liked that project. In this industry, when the, on the management side of things, I would have to say my favorite and and my least favorite project would be the one that I'm on now. <laughs> it's like a love-hate relationship with the project that I'm on now. <laughs> but a lot of challenges, and it's it's so many challenges and obstacles that it is, it's preparing me for a lot of things to come. So um, we have a lot of, uh, we have to kind of tread waters between Mayor's Office of Housing, our developers, our architects, and ourselves, and our subcontractors. So that gets really, really tricky. Um, but I love it because... A lot of good is coming out of it, even though a lot of it took a lot of steps backwards to get there. And right. also because of what the point is, it's 20, us 20 units of affordable housing um, that is for whether it be homeless or single mothers with children or something. It's for hitting homes, which is an affordable housing um, affordable housing sector. So that's always a good thing to, to feel good and feel part of after all the heartache and all the headaches and all the back and forth, right? The, the end, 
product is a great thing for the community. It's good for the people. And like you said, maybe you'll take something from it, learn something from it. And, you know, the architects sit in an office and draw these drawings. They don't know what's going on sometimes on the site, right? So they rely on people like you that are there in the trenches or they, where they say, build this wall, do this, do that. You know, wait a minute, that can't go there. This can't go there either. Or mm-hmm. try to negotiate all the, like you said, one of the things I think would be crazy is scheduling all the GCs and the subs on there, right? You got all these mm-hmm. subs coming and going, trucks coming and going, people coming and going, stuff being delivered, park over here. Don't, don't you can't park here, especially if you're in the city, I'm sure parking's going to be a disastrous yeah. nightmare. And, and one, bring... sub, one sub doesn't want to work who now because it's inconvenient for them because they have to put up scaffolding over some pavers, but there's another sub there who wants everything removed because they're doing excavation. And every, if everything is a worker, Everything is a play with each other in the sandbox nicely, please. <laughs> or maybe That's not right. nicely, but you have to play with each other in the sandbox. Right. Figure it out. <laughs> uh, what about some, maybe some obstacles or challenges that you face as a, as a woman in the business? What are some things that you face there? I mean, a um, lot more women in the business now, a lot more women in the industry. Is there any particular challenge that you've faced that you've overcome that maybe people would like to learn about? I think as a Female, speaking totally honestly, we've come a long way. We have made a lot of strides. That being said, I think we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. I think um, women in construction is a great ideal. I think a lot of people want to adopt that. I think actually adopting that is, it's easier said than done. I can say that for a fact because even my, for myself, if I walk onto a job site and I see a female on the job site, and I love seeing women on job sites, steel right. workers, whatever, love it. But my first knee-jerk gut reaction is to go find out who the man in charge is. And so, and I know that that is, it's credibility is just, it's not there for us just yet. It's getting there um, and it's earning it day by day um, out of respect. So the more that, we work with the people in our environment, the more that we are able to build those rapports, greater our credibility grows. But each step along the way and each new experience, proving you have to prove yourself over and over again. But that's okay, because eventually, hopefully your your circle will grow, you'll have that rapport, but it is still a work in progress and we do still have a long way to go. And it's funny to me that we even still talk about this in 2024, right? Like, why can't we just, you know, base, base it on your, your you instead of your, gender right what's that it's always it's 2024 right well why do people still even if, if you're qualified to do the job Paul Hill's hired you to do the job you're, you're the person man or woman doesn't it doesn't matter to me you know you're, you're the if bald hill has the faith in you do the job well then that's it you know but I, I agree with you I think we've come far we've got a ways to go uh you know I'm glad I'm here to be part of it I think it's pretty awesome um what about as far as what's next for say, you um, if, if you don't mind I just... yeah So I love what I do, one, because I get to bring a certain expertise and skill set to the table and add something, bring something to the table that makes me feel fulfilled and like I'm I'm contributing. At the same respect, I'm learning something every day. I'm so I'm I don't get bored. Mm. I'm learning a billion new things every day. So for me, the next step would be a site superintendent then to continue to be followed up by maybe a lead superintendent one day or an executive. Um, I left iron working because I wanted to be able to continue growing and I could only go so far in iron working. I become a foreman. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to keep learning and Mm -hmm. that's, so the next step for me is just going and going and learning and keep every new day. I could be in the job for 10 years. Then tomorrow would bring totally new obstacles, totally new experiences. So that's my next step. Well, Bill Bills is lucky to have you, I think, because uh, you're going in the right direction. So I just love what you said about always learning every day, learning a billion things, right? Not, not everybody can handle that. You know, some people, you know, they're good. But if you're always constantly learning, I think that's great for you, great for your customers, great for Bald Hill, great for Bald Hill's customers. It's uh, fantastic. Uh, Rachel, if anybody wanted to get a hold of you or had any other questions about superintendent type stuff, how can they get a hold of you? Sure. Um, I'm I'm hoping it's okay to get my company email right sure. here. Yeah. Sure. So it would be um, R Apple. My last name is Apple. So R Apple at BaldHillBuilders.com. Awesome. And now uh, this next part is the lightning round sponsored by Bald Hill Builders. We're proud to have them as a sponsor. So first question up is going to be, what is your most used emoji? Um. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that would probably be the the laughing 
I'm okay. Oh, a lot of people say that. <laughs> um, what was the worst style choice you ever made? Leg warmers. Oh, geez. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. If a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be and who would play you? Oh, it would be a horror flick. And <laughs> um <laughs> a horror flick. I would probably be I would probably be Scarface running after everybody else. Man, who would play and, you? And who would, who would play the female? Play female. Hey, Courtney Cox. She All would right, be love running it. through trying with a chainsaw. I love it. Uh favorite food is <laughs> favorite food as a child. Do you still hate it or do you love it now? Favorite food as a child was spaghetti. Absolutely love it still. Awesome. Favorite sandwich and why? I love a really good turkey or ham sandwich with uh, lettuce, tomato, pickles, mayo, mustard, whole nine. Oh, I need that for lunch. Um, if aliens landed on Earth tomorrow and offered to take you home with them, would you go? Ha. Huh. No. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Hmm, that's a really good question. I would probably want to be, I want to fly because I love heights. I love being, you know, I love arm working. I love being up high. I would love to be able to fly. Oh, uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I had some pineapple and a coffee and some hash browns and bagel bites from Dunkin' Donuts. Are you a morning person or a night person? Oh, God, I hate mornings. I am a total night person. <laughs> Are you a good dancer? I am a good dancer, actually. I was a dancer my whole life. I did wow. a ton of dance, belly dancing, professional dancing. Um, my concentration, I did engineering in school, but we had to concentrate in the humanities. So my concentration was Latin American culture and language and society. And I did it, spent some time in Latin America and I love Latin dancing. Um, oh salsa, merengue, stuff like that. I love wow. to dance. So most people say no, but see, you <laughs> asked the right questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, would you rather lose all your money or all your pictures? Oh, all my pictures. And uh, then we always ask this question. It was a food fight at the Apple House tonight. What is your weapon of choice? And you cannot say spaghetti. Pie. Oh, but type of pie. It depends. It could be messy for the pie. Banana cream pie. Just oh, right. Just, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I, I'm not going to your house because that's going to be a mess to clean up. Some people <laughs> pick something super messy and that was it's super so messy. <laughs> All right. That's our friend Rachel Apple, uh, assistant site superintendent for Ball Hill Builders. They are sponsoring the lightning round of the podcast. We are lucky to have them on board with us. If there's any questions, reach out to the folks over there at Bald Hill. Thanks, Rachel. Appreciate you being on. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here.